like a live concert while we wear masks. Oh, yeah? Welcome to our uh, brand new edition of whatever we feel like talking about today, we're going to talk about. I'd like to introduce Elton Charles. He's a Nashville uh, beast on the drums. He's a session guy. He's a live guy. He's an all-around great guy. Um, we've played together live before. Mm -hmm. We've never played in masks before. No, it's the first time. You know? So today we've uh, invited an actual musician alongside <laughs> a hack to describe to you how these wild dog stomp pedals from Australia will work for you. If you happen to be a guitarist, if you happen to be a percussionist, if you happen to be uh, in your home stuck working on looping live stream videos, this video is for you because I can create a loop on my own as a guitar player. I'm very limited in my abilities with my right foot, but somebody with a big old right foot like Elton, who actually knows how to play kick drum or play cajon as he has set up with him today, he knows where to place those rhythms. He's gonna sh pretend to show me how to do it, and I guarantee you at the end, I'm still not gonna be able to. I can do a four on the floor thing like I was doing in our, in our intro jam. I can get a... You're not a real drummer until you rush every time you play. That's, that's the whole thing. Um, so, Elton, welcome. Thank you. For Thank me. you for being here. Yeah, absolutely. So, what am I doing that is really, right off the bat, really obvious? I'm just playing four on the floor, and I can mm -hmm. kind of link my strumming with that. Right. What, what could I do to take my playing more into, into, into your territory? Well, I think the natural inclination is... Uh, most guitarists are always um, tapping on the floor when you're playing, yeah. and you're normally tapping four on the floor. Gotcha. So while you're out on the road, that's perfect for most things, but if you want to change it up, yeah. um, as a drummer, you, you're normally linking up your right foot with the bass player or your rhythm, like your right hand. Oh, interesting. So depending on what the rhythm is and what you're playing, you can try to link your right foot with your right hand. Okay. So instead of like what we were doing, like play what we were doing earlier. Yeah. Um, and I'll do four on the floor. All right. Yeah, yeah. But what I could be doing, keep playing. Is ah. By the way, your check's in the mail for that. That's <laughs> so I'm playing on the wild dog, the Tassie Devil, the little guy. It's, it's still all hardwood. It's exotic hardwoods. It's hand signed. It's, this is, in my opinion, where these begin. And this would be the simplest one for somebody like me to get into. As Elton says, if I'm going to be, I just want that kick either four on the floor or I want to establish a kick pattern. This is where I'd begin, and this is probably good enough for me at home if I'm going to you know, hook it up. We, you and I were talking earlier about hooking this up to a looper. Mm -hmm. If I can get even this running through my, if I've got a little uh, single pedal looper or I've got a large module, um, like a Line 6 or something, we've had a lot of artists that come through here, and that's the one they use. If you're, if you're plugging this in and you can establish a four on the floor, you could loop that loop. It's still going. See how I did that? <laughs> And I want to then try, as a guitar player, I want to practice and get, and, and show me your kick pattern that you were doing, it was one, you were kind of following me. Yeah. What's a standard kick pattern for a, a, a kick drum? Is it one, two, and three, and four, and one, and That's two, a, and yeah, three, that or four on the floor okay. is probably most, will cover most songs, okay. most genres. So if I'm going to try to loop four on the floor, that's easy. If I'm going to try and loop one, and then the three, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. I can loop that and let it play while I'm playing. Now, which one are you playing? You've got the larger I've dingo. I've got the, uh, the dingo, yes. Um, and it, lo it looks to be bamboo. Yes, it is. Um, you get a point. Yeah, and it's really ergonomic, actually, the way it's built on a, uh, the pickup's built on a footboard okay. instead of being on the floor, like your heel being on the floor and right. tapping it, which is a little bit more of an angle. This is, your heel is on the actual pedal. Oh, cool. And can you use all surfaces there for different tones? Yeah, um, you can use the front part of your foot as normal, or the yeah. back part. Oh. Different thing, or you can, oh, the totally entire different. thing is a pickup, so no matter where you hit it, it, it makes a sound. 
totally different can... attack with your heat. Like it, it's much, yeah. much more attack on that. Yeah, I like that. Very cool. Now, for me, I've got, I don't, you know, don't necessarily have a use for a, a tambourine jingle, but some of the other ones have tambourine jingles. Mm -hmm. Would you, as a drummer, if you were incorporating one of these into your rig, would, would the jingles be uh, a good idea or would they be overkill or how would you approach that? Um, I think if I'm using it as a kick drum pedal, I think, or a kick drum substitute, I think the jingles might be a little much. Okay. Um, just because you'll have that on every, I know it's not plugged in. But yeah, yeah. We'll plug it in. You'd have that on every, every downbeat or every kick pattern, whatever that is. Uh, it might get a little too much because normally tambourine would just be on the upbeats or every, uh, like on the snare, two and four. Nice. So I think it might be a little bit okay. much, but as a guitarist, it adds a little, if you're just doing four on the floor or whatever pattern it is and it's just you, it might actually work out to be really cool. Oh, neat. Well, let's hear what that sounds like. We're going we're gonna to plug in. I'm going to start with the, with the, the basic, just jingles and, and more of a, f uh, of a, of a foot pedal. So let's get, let's get that on. I will, uh, through the magic of, of television editing, watch this. <laughs> okay. okay. You, is he gone? He's, yeah. Oh. If we could have, um, I, I, if we spend the extra six bucks on the program, we'll get one of those dissolves that turns into a swirl. <laughs> <laughs> we could do that next time on Elton and Jesse talk about absolutely nothing. So now I'm plugged into the Silverback, which is a larger version, uh, still a bamboo version. Um, and very similar to what Elton had previously. Right. Um, but now no I've got, in bamboo, I've now got Jingles. I have a buddy named Jingles, by the way, and if he ever sees this, he's the man. Um, so you were mentioning to me as a guitar player, this might benefit my loops and my, just the overall vibe. I can kill a couple more birds with fewer stones if I. Yeah, it's a little bit more of like. Yeah. yeah, like that, and it even sounds fuller too. To me, to mm -hmm. my ears, it sounds a little more oomphy. And yeah. you're right about the, the positioning of my foot. Yeah, and, I mean, it just depends on what you're more comfortable with. The jingles apparently will jingle either way. Front yeah, or yeah, back. I noticed that. I wondered if maybe I could get them to, to not. But I kind of dig it. I mean, my preference personally when I'm listening to this versus that, I'm I'm really liking this sound. As a player, it's inspiring. So if I if I was to do one of two things, I'm just thinking through how I would approach it. Mm. I would either try the four on the floor thing, or with my practicing, because I have a lot of time to practice while I'm at home, I would practice my and set that to a loop, and then try to play over it. You think that makes sense? Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. How I would. Okay. Yeah, that and I mean, there's one and two or and three. Show me. One, two and three. Oh, neat. Now, I'm not even into it. <coughs> yeah, no, uh, that's gonna be <laughs> next video. I got another thing to look it, forward to. It just depends on what you're more, most comfortable with. And I mean, I've seen other people with, with different products or if they're just using, I've seen guys stand up and have a, uh, one of these or a kick yeah. drum behind them and they're using their heel. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Um, and and it, what, it's kind of whatever works. This right. is so interesting to me because it's so portable. Right, and like, this is, it's flat, it'll go right in your guitar case, and you have, I mean, it weighs nothing. Nice. Now, what I notice what you're doing is you've taken, we've taken the kick uh, pedal off your cajon, and you're actually right. using, you're, as you pointed out, a substitute for your kick. Yes. Does this make, as a drummer, does this make sense to you? Like, would this be like a, oh, that's a cool, depending on what flavors I want to pull out that, that night or that whatever, would, yeah. this, would this work? Yeah, if you want to change it up, um, absolutely. It, it definitely, it's a little different than the, the bass from this with the kick drum pedal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if, you, if, if you're not comfortable, because if, it's, if you're using the kick drum pedal, you have to use the back of your heel. Got it. Which is r unnatural for drummers. Oh, um, because it's like you're, counterintuitive you're, almost. Exactly, because you're so used to doing the front motion and now you're putting your toes down and using the back of your heel. Um, if you're not quite comfortable with that, these are a great option because you can do the same motion and get a kick drum sound. Oh, right on. And then it frees up your hands to not have to worry about, instead of trying to come up with, you can now free that up, use your foot. Oh. And not have to worry about it. That's a so. totally different vibe because you're, you're, 
And you're doing this the whole time. Right, so you don't have to be bent over. I mean, some people play like this. Yeah. Some people will do this. It, you can be upright and stay on your cajon longer because inevitably you'll end up doing two four-hour gigs on it at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Nashville. Right, and then you end up with Mickey Mouse hands at the end because Got all the blood rushes there. Of course. But um, this allows you to stay upright, and then you have the avail availability to use other toys, a shaker, a tambourine, right. whatever else you want to do. Um, and you have both your hands. Oh, that's neat. And what about what about not cajoning? What if you had a what if you had brushes and a snare? Would that would would Absolutely. essentially the same mm -hmm. mentality or same uh, thought process work? Like you could play your. I'm not. I'm not the guy at the <laughs> restaurant doing the. I'm not. This is snare. This is this the is chef. This is your fabulous brushwork. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the yes. Charlie Brown Christmas record. Um, yeah, absolutely. It would save you bringing a kick drum, especially if you don't have a small one. Um, you could just bring a snare, some brushes, and this, and be covered right. for a gig mostly. Right. Now, and, and speaking for um, in other terms, we do have these plugged in. These are passive, so I don't need a I don't need a power supply. I don't need. I just need a quarter inch in. Mm -hmm. um, that's going. We have it plugged into a, a, an AER amp, and what you're hearing on the video is we have it mixed. Uh, there's a line in, and we also have a, an SM57 running on front of the front of the amp. So, it does have to be similarly to the way we have your cajon mic'd or the way you'd have a snare mic'd or anything you'd mic it would just be we'd be able to because i can't mic it but i do have to run it into one of your channels so just be aware of that mm -hmm. if you are thinking of it in a live setting the wild dog pedals need to be plugged in but they are passive um they're all as we said all hand signed all australian hardwoods and exotic hardwoods they, they will increase from there all of the specs on them are on our website um, and you can decide between uh, which woods you want for aesthetic purposes. We did notice though that the tones between my my bamboo and your that's a it's a different tone. That's the exotic mm -hmm. hardwood um, the the tassie devil that I started with. And it's got a very cool uh, engraved. That's my paw. Paw. Yeah, he, we call him paw. <laughs> no. That's a Jack Handy joke. Uh, <laughs> and they also come as as uh, Steve is pointing out. They come with a with a. Oh. Uh, a carrying bag. So Very if you cool are, if, as as, Aust, uh, as Elton mentioned, if you if you want to throw it in your gig bag, fine. I would throw it in the pouch in the hey another Sorry. Australian marsupial pouch. Yes. I would throw it go. in in the in the pouch into the gig bag. So what we've established today is that as a guitar player, I've found my niche. I'm 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 in there, and I'm okay. I can get this four on the floor thing while I'm playing. I can also improve my skills at trying to achieve more of a, a drummer style kick pattern. Elton's got it all going on. He can, <laughs> he can use this as a drummer to accompany a hack. He can um, make use of each of these in different ways. Um, which one do you think, for your purposes, if you had to go play, like, like someone called and said, hey, it's two years ago and gigs are actually happening. <laughs> what do you take with you if you just grab something that's gonna, that'll get you through the gig? Um, I would probably grab either the Dingo or the Yowie. Okay. Um, the Tassie Devil would be cool, but uh, just because it's a little bit more of an angle. Yeah. Um, and it didn't quite sound as full as the other one for uh -huh. kick drum purposes. Yeah. But it probably would be one of these, um, and it would it actually honestly f probably fit inside of this oh, for travel purposes. Um, but th yeah, it would probably be one of those plugged in, um, and it would even free you up to bring if you wanted to bring a hi hat nice. as a drummer, so a hi hat snare, and one of these, and you'd be set. Awesome. I'm, t I'm sticking with Silverback, A, because I think it's the coolest name. And also, for my purposes, I want to improve and get my jingles happening. Hi, jingles. Um, that's where I'm at. That's where Elton's at. Thank you for watching. I really hope that you guys continue to send us comments and questions and, and ask us why on earth do they still let me do these and not hire a professional. <laughs> um, we want to hear everything you have to say, but we also want your feedback on these because we just started carrying these, and these are awesome. They're on our website. All the prices are listed. You can order them directly from us. We're so happy to have them in the shop. We're so happy to have Elton Charles join us today in the shop. Give him some love. He's on Instagram, and he's, uh, he's just a monster drummer. I love playing with this man. And we want, eventually, someday, maybe we'll get to play a show again together. Yeah, right? Brad, dude, let's go out on our jam again. Count me yeah. off. One, two, three, four. Thank you for watching.